welcome back to my channel. If you do not know me, my name is Ebony. I am a human design expert and coach, and we talk about human design on this channel, obviously. Um, today, this video is going to be about, it's, it's going to be about PHS, but not the entire PHS system. And the reason for that is because, well, for those of you who don't know, I'm currently getting certified in PHS, which is the primary health system, which is an extension of the human design system. It is an entire system that tells you how to best take care of your physical body, your physical form through the lens of human design. That is what I'm currently learning right now. It is a three-year program and I'm only in my first semester <laughs> and it's very theory based right now. We haven't gotten into, you know, the, the, um, the practical stuff just yet we're starting off with a lot of theory it's beautiful and I'm love I love learning about it but I we haven't gotten to the point where I'm I'm practicing the things that we've learned in the course because we've only learned theory up until this point so once I learn more beyond theory I will talk about it a lot more on my channel and obviously I'll be offering services once I'm fully certified at the same time, there is, there, there is, there are things that I can talk about right now because aside from the PHS system, the variables, the arrows at the top of your chart, your top left arrow actually deals with digestion. And I know, I know a lot about the variables. So even though it is a part of PHS, I'm not necessarily going to be touching on the entire PHS system because I haven't learned all of it yet, but I am going to be touching on digestion, how you can, how, how you best take in food, depending on what your top left arrow is doing. I hope that makes sense because I'm, you know, before we jump into the video, I have a giveaway going right now. So if you are interested in entering the giveaway, winning, I th I'm giving, a, I'm giving away five coupon codes, 50% off. Um, three of my human design energy type workbooks and a grand prize. The grand prize winner will get lifetime access to all of my self-paced courses. Past, present, and future. So anything that I create, you will get complete access to it. So check out the giveaway video if you're interested in that. And let's go ahead and dive in. I do have notes. This is a lot of information. Um, and I have uh, memorization. So I have notes. Don't judge me. Um, okay, so I mentioned this. Actually, I don't, I don't know which of these videos is going to get uploaded first. So we'll just have to, we'll just have to, you know, eyeball it. Anyway, if you want to get your digestion information, you are going to need a more advanced version of your chart. For me, I use mybodygraph.com most of the time to pull charts for my clients, but that information is not on that mybodygraph.com chart. You want to go to Genetic Matrix, geneticmatrix.com, make an account and pull your chart up on that site. It will show you your var variables and it will show you your determination, which is what we're looking at when we're talking about your digestion. It's called determination. So when you go on, you're going to pull up your chart, click the menu, and it should say design. So at first it'll say quantum. You're gonna click on the drop down menu and click design. That will show you the left side of your chart and you wanna look for determination. Whatever your determination is, that is your digestion type and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment and I'll try to explain it better. But hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's, okay, so let's start generally, yeah? So if your top left arrow is pointing to the left, you do not like being hungry. It is not good for you to be hungry and you need to take in food and fluids in a very consistent manner. Your diet needs to, well not your diet necessarily, but the times, the amount of which you take in food need to be very consistent. Being hungry for you, not good. <laughs> it's not great. See, and this is, um, before I knew this, yeah, before I knew about human design, I was very obsessed with losing weight. I didn't like the way my body looked and I was so desperate to lose weight that I started doing intermittent fasting and it was working. 
It was working great, but I was miserable. I was hungry all the time. All the time I was hungry. It didn't matter how much I would eat once I broke my fast. I never felt full while I was fasting. It was terrible. I was absolutely miserable. My top left arrow points to the left. I don't like being hungry. I don't like being hungry. I eat pretty much at the same times every day. I eat pretty much the same amounts every day. I do not let myself get hungry. I don't like being hungry. So that resonates with me for sure. Um, you also, if your top arrow point, your top left arrow points to the left, you do well taking in the same foods over and over and over and over again. You might eat a lot of the same things. That is okay. I eat the same thing for breakfast every single morning. I have two yogurts and some cinnamon toast crunch. It is what it is. I like cereal. And I kind of cycle through the same breakfasts. It's just, if it's not cereal, it's cream of wheat. If it's not creep, creep. <laughs> it's not cream of wheat, it's eggs and bacon. Love it. Those are like my three staples that I kind of cycle through for breakfast. Um, so that's, you know, arrow pointing to the left. If your top left arrow is pointing to the right, you can be more relaxed with your food intake. You don't have to be as structured. You can kind of just, you know, feel into it like, oh, I'm not hungry right now. I'm cool. I, I don't need to eat right now. Being hungry for you is not, oh, it's not a problem. Like if you're hungry, like, oh, you know, I could eat right now, but you don't have to eat at that moment. Like for me, it's like, as soon as I wake up, it's breakfast time. People with their arrow pointing to the right, it's like, hmm, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Um, yeah. So you might eat right when you wake up one day and then you might not eat till two o'clock in the afternoon the next day. You get to be more fluid in the way that you take in food because for you, it's not great. It's not healthy for you energetically to constantly be digesting or taking in food. It can actually be detrimental to your ability to focus and function. So for you, eating is a little bit more intuitive. I have a friend, one of my best friends. She spent the night over at my house one day. This was a few years ago at this point. And I remember, I remember this so vividly, waking up, waiting for her to wake up because she she was sleeping and I was like, oh my God, I'm starving. But like, I don't want to eat without you. And then you wake up like, oh, I'm hungry. And it's like, well, I already ate because, you know, I remember when she woke up, I was like, yes, we can eat breakfast now. Finally. And she was like, hmm. You know, I'm not hungry. I'm like, what? How do you sleep for eight hours and then wake up not hungry? I'm confused. I'm actually confused because me, I'm going to eat. As soon as I open my eyes, it's time for breakfast. She was like, no, I'm not hungry. I don't think she ate until like three o'clock in the afternoon that day. It was crazy. I didn't understand it. Now I do. Her arrow actually points to the right. So I was literally flabbergasted. Okay. Um, detrimental. Okay, I said that. For you, if your arrow points to the right, fasting might be a little bit more natural. But like if fasting feels good for you, fasting, you know, you do it. If it feels good for you, great, do it. But most people, well, that's a lie. I don't know most people. The Most of the people in my life who have an arrow pointing to the right, they kind of fast naturally. They just eat when they feel like eating. And it's not always consistent. They might eat once a day. They might eat three times a day. It depends on how they feel. So for, for them, it's more of a natural fast. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. We're going to get into the, the complicated stuff. Not really. It's not complicated once you, once you know what it is. You just find your type and then you're like, oh, that's what it is. Cool. So we're going to get into the, the we're going to get into the determination types hoping I can get this video because my speech is clearly having a problem. So the first color, and that's another thing. When we're dealing with the variables, there's base, tone, and colors and color. These are the more advanced elements that I was talking about as you get deeper into human design and these more advanced layers come up. This is a part of that. And this is what I'm currently learning in the PHS system. So again, as I learn more, it'll get easier for me to explain, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so the first color is 
where we get into the more primitive digestive system. The people in this color do well eating basic foods so that their, their digestive system doesn't get overwhelmed. And they do well with digesting single ingredients at a time. Like for, for my mom, I actually don't know what her determination is because her birth time is not on her birth certificate. She was born in the deep south in the 50s literally negro they were, they were like race negro i was like oh my god they put negro on your birds she was like yeah <laughs> but anyway but she the thing about her is she will eat her like her food she'll eat one thing at a time she'll eat her fries and then she'll eat her burger like she does i will mix them and be like and she's like no i'm gonna finish my fries first i'm gonna start my burger and then i'll have my drink she you know it's one thing at a time for her so that's similar to people who are in this this first color of determination. Yeah. So the first that we have is consecutive and alternating. The reason, this is another thing I should have mentioned. When it comes to this, you have a binary. So there's two different sides. So each color will have two different determinations because it's a binary, right? So the first set is consecutive and alternating. If you have a consecutive determination, you do well at taking in one thing or one ingredient at a time. Complex dishes that have a lot of different ingredients or spices combined are probably not your thing. And that's okay. And I think people in this category get a bad rap because they're considered to not be adventurous or they don't like to you know go out and try things and it's because their system gets overwhelmed very easily having a very basic diet of very basic foods works for them you don't have to go out and try all of the things you don't have to you you, you don't have to do that if you know that you have a consecutive determination you don't need to do that basic works for you and it's perfectly fine for you to have an entire meal consisting entirely of one food like for some my um my friend she'll have a salad she doesn't mix her greens she's like I like spinach my entire salad is spinach and that's it I'm like that sounds kind of boring no for her it works having an entire meal that's just spinach works for her and then she has her thing like she'll have her salad she'll have her little yogurt it's so cute the way she does her her lunches but she has all of her little things all separated and she'll eat them one at a time and she'll just move from thing to thing to thing she has a very basic digestive system and that works for her um if you have an alternating determination you still enjoy simple foods but you might find that you alternate more that you, you won't just finish the salad finish the yogurt finish this and then finish this you like take a little bit of this oh i'll take a little bit of this oh i'm gonna put this on here and see how that like you will kind of go back and forth between things as opposed to the consecutive determination who will finish one thing and start the other thing and finish that start on the other thing and finish that so they're kind of like two sides of the same coin because you're both in the same color you both have a very primitive i don't like that word but that's the word that we use in human design a very basic digestive system that can very easily get overwhelmed if you allow it to so if you have an alternating determination allow yourself to kind of dip into things as as it feels good but remember that you basic foods are like home base for you it works it, it's it's energetically correct for you to eat in that way Oh, also, if you're in this first color, if you are consecutive or alternating, be mindful of spices. Not that you shouldn't season your food, because, you know, season your food however you want, but it might be more beneficial for you to just, to, to do only what's necessary in terms of spices i know a lot of people be like oh you gotta season the hell out of all your food not necessarily correct for everyone you know if you have a consecutive or an alternating determination all the spices 
might not be correct for you. So do, do with that information what you will. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to get into the second color. Your digestive system is still very basic, the same as the first color. Um, and you also might take in a lot of the same things each day, just like, you know, the first determination or the first color. However, for you, seasonal ingredients are really where you shine because you have a high demand for nourishment. So the people in the second color, for them, they're the gatherers. So having seasonal ingredients, fresh ingredients, you're very, very sensitive to highly processed foods also. So seasonal and fresh ingredients are going to be the best for your digestive system because you have a high demand for nourishment and also because your, dig your digestive system is still very basic, still very primitive. Um, so in the second color, we have open taste and closed taste. If you have open taste, you have a very expen you you have a very experimental relationship with food in order to know if you like something or not you need to try it take your time to zone in on what tastes good to you and what doesn't there is a spot on my camera and it's bugging me okay there we go um yes so you if you you need to try something in order to know if you like it or not. And once you know, then you're like, okay, I'm going to incorporate this. If you try it and you don't like it, it's like, I'm just going to leave that alone. Focus on seasonal ingredients and allow yourself to just try things as they come up. You don't have to necessarily force yourself to try new things all the time, but make sure that you're giving yourself the opportunity to experiment with your diet experiment with local cuisine local um ingredients seasonal ingredients you know <laughs> i eat maybe three fruits <laughs> i don't know at any point in time i don't know what fruit is in season because i only eat you know specific fruits for you eating with eating um in accordance with eating in accordance with the season is energetically correct for you so start to experiment with you know seasonal ingredients and what you like and what you don't like if you have a closed taste which that same friend that I mentioned before the one who doesn't eat <laughs> who doesn't always need to eat she has a closed taste if you have a closed taste you don't need to try something to know that you don't like it you intuitively know that's not something I'm gonna like. You get to be more passive in discovering what you like and what you don't like when it comes to food. And she gets very frustrated because people will tell her like, how are you gonna know if you don't like something if you don't try it? She's like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't need to try it. I know I don't like it. That is correct for her. If you have a closed taste, you don't need to try something to know you don't like it. And if you don't like it, you get to leave it at that. You don't have to force yourself to try things. You just get to tap into, hmm, am I gonna like that? No, I'm not going to like that. So at the same time, when it comes to incorporating seasonal ingredients into your food, tap into that. Like really check in like, hmm, that's something that I want to try. This is something I think I'm going to like. Or I'm going to leave that alone. I'm, I'm not going to like that. I don't even want, I'm needing to try it because I know I'm not going to like it. Um, so that is, that is the second color. The third, oh my God, we're 18, 19 minutes into this video. And we're only on the third color. Okay, it's gonna be very long. So the third color is about temperature and how different temperatures can create dysfunction in your system depending on what your specific determination is. So this is about temperature. It's not about you know the environment or tasting, it's literally about the temperature of well actually no, it's a lie. It can it it can environment can factor in. I I that let me let me not say that environment can factor in so that's yeah anyway we'll just uh, I'm rambling. okay so in this set we have hot thirst and cold thirst so if you have hot thirst as your determination that means you have a cold system and it is more beneficial for you to cook your food because that will help your body break it down more there was a time I've tried a lot of different 
things to lose weight, guys. There was a time years ago when being a raw vegan was like the thing to do. It was the thing to do. And of course I tried it because it was the thing to do. Did not work for me. Didn't, it was, uh, it was just not for me. And if you have a hot thirst, personally, personally, I don't think being a raw vegan would be good for you because you need heat in order for your body to be able to digest food properly. Especially if we're talking about food that has very complex fibrous systems, it will be more beneficial for you, for your digestive system, to cook your food before you eat it. Adding that heat to your digestive process is is spot on for you. And the reason why I said that the environment could factor in, you probably don't like being cold while you're eating. So if you're like a, in a cold restaurant or if it's like winter time and let's say your heater's broken and it's freezing, probably not the best environment for you to be eating in because your digestive system is already cold. And in order, you know, that heat helps you digest better, digest easier. So cooking your food obviously but also putting yourself in a warmer environment turning on the heater um i don't know however you warm yourself up I don't know. eating while you're walking you know different things so that you can add heat to your digestive process and make it easier for your body to digest and process the the food that you're eating if you have a cold thirst then that means your body runs hot the food and drinks that you consume are to cool your system down I guess we could just like like flip it like you don't want to be in a really hot environment when you're eating because you want your food and the things that you drink to cool your system down so taking in food that is I guess lower than your body temperature but also just cooler in general so maybe not eating like right when your food comes out of the oven you know or like for me when I go to Jack in the Box and I get fries and they come right out of the oven and you pick them out of the bag and you go <laughs> that that thing you do when something's too hot and you knew it was too hot but you put it in your mouth anyway so now you're like <laughs> yeah that maybe not the best thing for you to do. <laughs> maybe not the best thing for you to do maybe waiting a few seconds for things to cool down eating cooler foods ice cream smoothies things like that also if you have a cold thirst you might experience heartburn when you eat um, high temperature foods or really spicy foods. That's your body saying that it's too hot and you need to cool it down. Yeah. So, um, so that could, it, 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 environment does tie into that as well. Whether you have hot or cold thirst, putting yourself in the opposite environment. So if you have a hot thirst, cooler environment when you're eating. If you have a cool thirst or cold thirst, putting yourself in a warmer environment when you're eating. And then paying attention to the temperature of your food. Cold, warm food, hot, cooler food. Yes. Okay. I had to bring that in mind. Wait, did I say that right? Cold, thirst, hot food. Wait. My notes. I lied. <laughs> I said it right the first time. Hot thirst, hot food. Cold thirst, <laughs> cooler food. I don't know if I explained that properly. I did. I did, right? Yes, I did. I'm... We're gonna get through this video, I promise. So, if you have a hot thirst, making sure you cook your food and you eat it while it's warm because you have a cooler system. Yeah? And you want to be in a warmer environment while you're eating as well. Cold thirst. You want to take in cooler food because you have a hot system. And you put yourself in a colder environment when you're eating. That is the that is right. That's right. The way I said it before was The way I explained it the first time was right. That middle part was wrong. This last part was right. Oh my God, I'm not even gonna cut any of this out.
just, just someone put in timestamps and you can just skip over it. Yeah. Okay. Fourth color. <laughs> so the fourth color is about environment. The environment that you are in when you eat is what this fourth color is all about. It's about where you are. So for this set, we have calm touch and nervous touch. If you have a calm determination, which I do, it's important for you to be in a calm environment while you're eating. So for me, I don't like eating in loud spaces. I don't like eating in loud restaurants. I don't like eating around loud people. And when I first discovered this in my chart, I was like, oh, that's definitely not me. What are you talking about? Like, I eat in restaurants all the time and things I, I, like when we go to family events, and family reunions, and then I just think about it. I don't actually eat all that much when I'm at a in a family environment because my family is so loud. And I find myself just not wanting to eat. And if I am eating, I'm not paying attention to it. I don't really feel great after. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't like eating in restaurants. I will eat in a restaurant if I'm at a restaurant, like, you know, with someone or with people. But I realize I don't always enjoy it. And most of the time while I'm eating, I will just stay completely quiet because that calms me down. If I'm talking to someone, I can't focus on my food and I can't, I, I feel like I'm not taking everything in the way that I should be. And I never really noticed it before I knew about my human design, before I knew about my determination. Didn't know that. So for me, it's very energetically correct for me to either be alone while I'm eating, for me to be very quiet while I'm eating, to be in a calmer environment while I'm eating. The flip side of that, the binary of that is nervous determination. Oh my God. Um, this, this isn't about you being nervous while you're eating. It's creating an upbeat environment for you when you're eating. My cousin has a nervous determination. And it's so funny because she's trying to lose weight, lose weight right now. And she called me, she was like, I'm having so much trouble losing weight because I never feel like eating. Like I sit down to eat and I get bored. Like, I don't know what to do. I just don't want to eat. I hate the fact that I have to sit down and eat. And I'm like, well, and I've done a reading for her before. So she already knows all of this. I'm like, well, are you playing music while you eat? Are you like walking while you're eating? Are you doing other things while you're eating? And she's like, no, that's probably why. If you have a nervous, a nervous determination, sitting down and trying to force yourself to sit through a meal is not energy energetically correct for you. You are going to get bored. If you have a nervous determination, you need to do other things while you're eating, working, walking, listening to music, talking to friends. For you, your environment needs to be more upbeat in order for you to properly digest. Because if you try and sit yourself down and force yourself to just eat and just be completely calm you're gonna get bored and you're like I don't want to do this and you're just gonna get up you're not gonna finish because you're just you're bored like for you you need to move energy while you're eating so I told her like get up and walk while you're eating walk around the apartment take a working lunch while you're eating work through your lunch you know do whatever it is that you need to do to make your environment more upbeat for you to move the energy while you're eating that will help you a lot in terms of, you know, digesting and taking in food consistently because you do need to eat, but it's the way and the environment in which you need to be in to make it an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Okay. I really hope this is making sense. So the fifth color is about sound. And this is where we start getting into, why are you making noise? Oh no, it's coming apart. This is where we get into the, the really sensitive parts with the people who are a lot more sensitive, but not that their digestive system is sensitive. Different sensitive from like the first color who have very sensitive digestive systems. We're talking about people who are more cognitively very sensitive. So this has to do with sounds. And it's about your external environment and the acoustics around you. So the set, this set is high sound and low sound. If you have a high determination, then while you're eating, it is very beneficial for you to have a louder environment. 
whether you're listening to music, whether you're around a lot of people, whether you have like, you know, kids or dogs or whatever, having a lot of sounds around you while you're eating is very beneficial for you. And this is something that you want to recreate when you're eating in order to not only make yourself more comfortable, but to also make the digestion process a lot easier and more effective. So listening to music, having headphones, just being around a lot of people while you're eating works for you. If you have a low determination, then you need it to be quiet while you're eating. Being alone or using like noise, noise canceling headphones or, you know, like, I guess that's, I guess that's it. Being alone, headphones, just going to a quiet place that works for you when it comes to eating and, and taking in food. Um, sounds are very di digestive. Sounds are very disruptive to your digestive process. So you want to make sure that there's little to no sound when you're eating and that that'll make it that that'll be good for you okay so last one we made it it's the last one hopefully I can get through this without completely messing up okay so we have the sixth color and the sixth color is about again your external environment the physical world however now we're talking about the natural light and also your the hormones that are secreted in like your circadian rhythms and how that contributes to your digestive process at different points of the day. It'll make sense when I explain it. Anyway, so we have direct light and indirect light. If you have a direct determination, then you need to eat in a brightly lit area. It's much more beneficial for you to eat while the sun is up and to eat in view of the sun, like eating near a window or eating outside works great for you and probably eating lighter or eating less once the sun goes down like your prop midnight snacking probably not great for you probably not even something you really want to do um because again having that natural light while you're eating makes your digestive process smoother and easier so eating you know, your nutrient dense meals, your really big meals during the day in the sunlight and then saving your lighter meals for like nighttime or, you know, when it's dark um, is, is probably the best, I guess, routine for you when it comes to food. If you have an indirect determination, you're basically a nocturnal individual. You, <laughs> you eat, well, not you eat better, but you digest better when the sun is down or when it's very dark. So people with this determination, they, it, it, it might be beneficial for you to get like blackout curtains or to eat in very dimly lit places or even just eating your most nutrient dense meals at night. So maybe eating lighter throughout the day and then having your denser bigger meals at night if you have an indirect determination you're probably a midnight snacker like I was just on a podcast yesterday I had a podcast episode come out yesterday and one of the hosts on that show has an indirect determination and she was like I'm always you know eating hot she does in the middle of the night I'm like yeah you're nocturnal that's <laughs> you want to digest more when it's dark you would digest better when it's dark when the sun has gone down so that is energetically correct for you um so when you're eating try to keep a you know darker environment okay you guys that was it we went through all six colors we went through all 12 determinations i'm not gonna lie that hot and thirst that hot thirst and cold thirst thing kind of threw me because it's I, I was thinking that it was switched but it's not so the first time that i explained it was right Second time I explained it was a mess. The last time was also right. I knew, and this is why I used notes because I knew I was gonna get confused. Those those two just confuse me sometimes. Okay, so that is it. I hope that this video was helpful. Remember that the giveaway is still going on. If you're interested in entering that, check out the giveaway video. If you're interested in working with me, go ahead and click the description box. Click the link 
in the description box down below. If you have any questions about this, if there's anything that I didn't explain great, um, leave your questions down below and I will try my best to answer them better than I did in this video. <laughs> 35 minutes, that is it. I'm gone. I will see you in the next video.